What's up everyone, if you're on a Samsung device with One UI 8, you might have discovered that the OEM unlock toggle has vanished, making bootloader access incredibly tricky. But no worries, in this tutorial, I'll walk you through a workaround to unlock the bootloader on your One UI 8 Samsung device, even when that option seems completely unavailable. This guide is a bit technical and lengthy, but I've simplified everything into easy, actionable steps that anyone can follow. Before we jump in, a quick disclaimer. This technique only works if your specific model can be downgraded to One UI 6 or 7. Additionally, this procedure will completely erase everything on your phone, invalidate your warranty and permanently trip knocks. And if your goal is to root One UI 8, you can skip this video and follow the dedicated routing tutorial instead. Alright guys, enough intro. Now let's dive right in. Right now, I'm on a Samsung Galaxy S23, currently operating on One UI 8 built on Android 16. First, let's enable developer option by tapping on build number 7 times. Once enabled, return to the main settings and open developer options. Here's the issue. The OEM unlock switch is nowhere to be found. This is precisely why unlocking the bootloader on One UI 8 is so challenging. To make this possible, we must first roll back our software to an earlier version, either One UI 7 or One UI 6. Please check out my other video where I demonstrate exactly how to downgrade from One UI 8 to One UI 7 or One UI 6. Once your downgrade is complete, return to this video to proceed with unlocking the bootloader. Okay, I've just completed the downgrade to One UI 7, so let's verify it in settings. You can see we're now on One UI 7.0 with Android 15. The rollback worked perfectly. The next move is re-enabling developer options so we can unlock the bootloader. Let me activate it quickly. Great! This time the OEM unlock toggle is visible. Exactly what we need. Just switch it on. With OEM unlocking active, scroll down and also switch on USB debugging. This permits communication between your Samsung device and computer. Once both settings are active, we can boot into download mode. Start by plugging your device into your PC, then restart the handset. The moment the Samsung logo vanishes, immediately press and hold volume up plus volume down simultaneously. Keep holding until a warning screen appears. Now press and hold volume up to unlock the bootloader. A confirmation will pop up. Press volume up once more to confirm. Your phone will automatically wipe all data and unlock the bootloader, then restart on its own. During boot, you'll notice a small warning stating the bootloader is unlocked. That's totally normal. The phone will still load the system as usual. Perfect, the device is back online. Now let's reactivate developer options. As you can see, OEM unlock is already on and grayed out. Confirming the bootloader is successfully unlocked. Make sure to also enable USB debugging again right below it. Now let's switch to the computer and organize the required files for unlocking the One UI 8 bootloader. Next, we need to download both firmware files. That's One UI 7 and One UI 8 for your device model. You should already have the One UI 7 firmware since we downgraded earlier. So go ahead and download the One UI 8 firmware as well. Once both files are downloaded, it's a good idea to rename them. Just add One UI 7 and One UI 8 at the start or end of each file name. This makes it easier to identify which one is which later. After that, extract both firmware files using any unzip tool like 7-zip. Once everything is extracted, you can delete the original zip files to keep things clean and organized. Next, open the One UI 7 folder and extract the BL file using 7-zip. Once that's done, open the extracted BL folder and look for a file named abl.elf. Now copy this file cause we'll need it in a moment. Then paste the ABL file into your One UI 8 folder. This is a very important step, so make sure it's done correctly. That's it. We only needed the ABL file from One UI 7. So you can safely delete the One UI 7 folder to keep things simple. Now open the One UI 8 folder 
and extract both the BL file and the AP file using 7-zip. This step will give you access to all the internal files we need to modify before creating our rooted firmware. Once both are extracted, copy this ABL file and paste it into the BL folder. Inside BL folder, you'll find another ABL.ELF file. Delete that existing one and paste the new ABL file. Perfect. Now the One UI 8 firmware has the older ABL file, which helps bypass the bootloader restrictions on One UI 8. Next, look for the VB meta file inside the same BL folder. We need to move this VB meta file into the AP folder. And guys, move mean move, don't copy it. Once that's done, it's time to pack everything back into a tar file. So select all the files inside the AP folder and create the ap.tar file using 7-zip. You can give the file any name you like, for example, AP or AP patched, but make sure the format is set to tar. We will need to patch this file using Majisk to root our One UI 8 device. Once the file is created, let's move it to your Samsung phone. I'll quickly do that. Alright, the file is copied and here it is on our phone. Next, go ahead and download the latest Majisk app from the link in the description and install it on your device. This app will help us patch the AP file and gain root access on One UI 8. Once installed, open the Magisk app and tap on install. Then choose select and patch a file. Now browse and select the AP file you just copied from your PC. Once it's selected, tap on let's go. Magisk will now start patching the file and this process might take a few minutes depending on your AP file size. So just be patient and wait for it to complete. So file is now patched and saved to the download folder. Let's quickly confirm that. And yes, here we have our Magis patched file successfully created. Now let's move this patched file back to the PC. So I'll quickly copy it from the phone and paste it inside the same One UI 8 folder where we have the rest of our firmware files. Once the file is copied back to the PC, the next step is to extract the Magis patched AP file using 7-zip. After extraction, open the new patched folder and look for the VB meta file. Now cut this VB meta file from here and paste it into the BL folder that we prepared earlier. Once that's done, select all the files inside the BL folder, right click and create a new tar archive file using 7-zip. Make sure the archive format is tar, not zip. Next step, remove all the extra files and folders that we no longer need. This will keep everything neat and easy to follow. So now these five files are the only ones we need moving forward. It's time to open Odin. Download Odin from the link in the description, extract it and launch the odin.exe file. Now inside Odin, click the BL button and choose the modified BL.tar file we created earlier. Next, load the rest of the original firmware files. Select the AP file in the AP section and the CP file in the CP section. For CSC, you'll see two options, CSC and Home CSC. Pick Home CSC to preserve your data. After loading all four files correctly, boot your phone into download mode again. Let me quickly boot into download mode. Mode. So first, connect your device to the PC and then restart your phone. As soon as the Samsung logo disappears, press and hold both volume up and volume down buttons together until you see a blue warning screen. Now press and hold the volume up button for about 3 seconds and your device will enter download mode. Once the device enters download mode, Odin will show an added message. That confirms your phone is detected and we're ready to begin. Now click the start button and Odin will begin flashing the firmware. This process usually takes around 8 to 10 minutes depending on your PC's speed. We'll skip ahead while the flashing completes. 
Excellent, the firmware installation is finished. Odin displays the pass confirmation and the handset is automatically restarting. The initial startup might take longer than expected. This is completely normal, so just stay patient while it completes. Perfect, the phone has successfully powered on and we're officially operating on One UI 8. Let's jump into the settings to verify this. Now let's activate developer options and inspect the OEM unlock status. And there it is. The bootloader unlock confirmation message is now visible directly on our One UI 8 device. Everything worked as expected. If the OEM toggle or bootloader status is still not showing on your device, then make sure your phone is connected to Wi-Fi or mobile network because sometimes the option appears only after the system finishes syncing. Alright, that's it for today's guide on how to unlock the bootloader on a Samsung phone running One UI 8 even if the OEM option wasn't visible at first. If this video helped you out, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.